I just want to start wondering how you're all feeling because it's the best season of the year, everybody. I truly believe it. The best season of the year is upon us. It is football season, y'all. How are we feeling? It's true. That's the only reason I'm okay that summer's over because mm -hmm. at least we have football. How are we feeling about our teams? Are we feeling optimistic, Hollis? I'm feeling really good. Jacksonville Jaguars, we're going to win the AFC South. <laughs> we're going to come in in the playoffs, and we're going to have a better record than the Philadelphia Eagles. No shot. No shot. I'm in front of all of you right now. I'm betting Hollis a Texas Roadhouse dinner that the Eagles have a better record than the Jaguars. Oh, deal? 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 All, right. all right. And if they don't, I'm not giving you anything. What? <laughs> Just kidding. I will. Duh. That's not how deals work. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to This Is Kingdom, a good news brand podcast. This is Grace. This is Talon. This is TJ. This is Hollis. And this week we're talking about Be Still and Know That I Am God by Elder Bednar. And guys, this talk actually came in at the right time in my life this week. I feel like I feel like this last week has been really hard for me to be still. I feel like I've been still in the worst way possible, and that's just like scrolling it's binging tv shows <laughs> you're rotting i like brain rot for real mm -hmm. like you know when you're in church i don't know if this happens on your iphones but i always get my screen time notification during sacrament That's meeting so true that is so church. true and it's I'll, like your weekly check-in yes. with god like how much time you've like i'm spending. having a good time during sacrament meeting i get a buzz they're like, oh, screen time. Okay. And was I it clear crazy the notification as fast as possible. Me too. I don't even look at it anymore. <laughs> I, even, I was like, I don't even know. Oh, no. Drop the hour. Drop the hour. Uh, it's okay. Um, <laughs> but honestly, it's really motivated me to try to be still, but not in that way. And I really love this talk by Elder Bednar because he gave me a new kind of idea of what being still is. I feel like before being still to me was like, meditation is maybe going to the temple, it was being quiet, is maybe like watching the sunset for 10 minutes. But in this talk, he gave me a new perspective. He starts talking about how the saints in Missouri were persecuted and everywhere they moved, they just kept getting persecuted, kept getting persecuted and things kept happening. And then he says something about how the Lord revealed something to the prophet Joseph Smith. He says, therefore, let your hearts be comforted concerning Zion for all flesh is in mine hands, be still and know that I am God. Then Elder Bednar continues and says, I believe the Lord's admonition to be still entails much more than simply not talking or not moving. Perhaps his intent is for us to remember and rely upon him and his power at all times and in all things and in all places that we may be in. And I love that because it's not just about not talking or not moving. It reminds me of an experience or a phase of life I had about a year, a year and a half ago, where... Uh, life was pretty tough, and I was going through some things and looking for a new job. And I applied to two places, two places I love. And I just kind of wanted to get out of Utah. I was like, I don't want to be here. I don't think I should be here. I just want to get away from everything. And one of the jobs I applied to was for the UN in New York. That would have brought me over there. And the other job, I would have moved to Arizona and work at McKinsey uh, Consulting. And I got to the last round of interviews at both positions. And I'm like, dang. I'm either going to move to New York or Arizona right now. This is so sick. This is perfect for my life. And I ended up being the runner up in both positions. That's really depressing. <laughs> One person ended up getting the job at McKinsey and the other person ended up getting the job at the UN. And I was the runner up in both. And it was just heartbreak after heartbreak. And I was like, what is happening? Like, God, where are you? Why am I going through this heartbreak right now? This is the last thing I need on my plate. And I can't help but think about here where I think what really helped me during those times was my soul was able to be still because I knew who my God was. I feel like everything in my life was tearing down at my soul and everything wanted to attack it and tear it down, all this worry and doubt and unknowns. But I feel like these closed doors actually reminded me of who God was. Because sometimes I feel like a life with God might have some more closed doors than open. Because that's when you know you're living a God-worshipping life. It's because God will make the most out of those closed doors. He'll make the most out of those open doors. And it's not just in being still, but it's in moving that we can be the best at being still and know that God is there. And I just love this note that sometimes we need to move. We want to be still and know that God's there for us. That's so good. That's so good. And I love, 
I feel like I've learned again and again that God is good. Like I just, it's the lesson that I keep on learning. I feel like I learn it deeper and deeper, but there are times in my life that I don't feel that, or I don't remember that, or I'm not thinking of that. And and I think that's what Elder Bednar was hitting on is you really need to take time again and again and again to reflect on on his goodness, on his power, on his wisdom, because we just forget so fast. And it, it just made me think like if I were if I were trying to help someone like grow or learn or become something, I would try to set up a structure where they'd have opportunity after opportunity to remember the things that matter most. And I really think that's what God's trying to do with church, with temple, and, and with scripture study. Like I feel like he's trying to set up these systems in our life that again and again and again, we can take time to stop and remember, even if crazy things are going on in your life, that he is good. Because it's remembering that that's going to calm your soul. It's remembering that that's going to bring peace. Well, and that's something so interesting that I don't think I ever connected to rest before was the intentional the intentionality. intentionality. Is I that like a real word? I'm like, okay. Yes. Yeah. I love that word. Is the inten- I love you saying that word. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> Is the intentionality of rest. And I think that's something that both of you just brought up in very different ways. Because when I initially think of rot, I mean, <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> when I initially think of rest, I think of rotting and like, just like doing nothing, like hoodie up, just absolutely like scrolling for hours, watching a show for hours, like dark room, like rotting. And the thing that's really interesting is that that's not rest. Mm. And that doesn't even feel like rest when I'm doing it. And both of you brought up two very different ways to find rest, remembering and being very intentional. Intentional. All the different ways to say intentional. (laughs) (laughs) Intentional, being very intentional with what you're thinking about. And then Hollis also brought up being like, doing things like sometimes rest is actually like making progress and figuring things out and switching up your patterns in life and the other day I was talking to one of my favorite people and we were talking about dragonflies which it seems out of nowhere but yeah we were talking about dragonflies they love them and so we were talking about dragonflies and they were saying how in a storm anytime it rains dragonflies cannot fly because their bodies just aren't strong enough like they really cannot go outside in the rain because otherwise they will just die And it's like almost this forced time of rest for them. Something that they have to be very intentional about. Otherwise, there are deep consequences. And I think that's the same for our souls and rest. It's not just about us hiding and us like rotting for hours and being like, no, this is like my me time. Like I need rest. But rather, it's about stopping and pausing and saying, there are storms outside of my life right now. And there is danger around me. And I need to be very intentional about what I'm going to do right now to protect my soul. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. So I just have this thought that that's hitting that's going to like kind of connect all these thoughts together. And it's crazy you just said storms. Because I've been thinking about the scripture, Helaman 512, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When, when the whirlwinds and the storms come, um, that uh, Satan is sending, that we build our, fo- it's so important for us to build our foundation on Christ. And Elder Bednar, and I love when he does this, he just goes beast mode and he's like, hey, I, I know you've been reading the scripture this way, but this is actually what it means. <laughs> and he does that with this scripture, talking about the rock and talking about the foundation, building our foundation on Christ. And he says, the symbolism of Christ as the rock upon whom we should build the foundation of our lives is most instructive. And then this is where he does it. He says, please know in this verse that the Savior is not the foundation which is crazy because usually we, I think, mm-hmm. Savior is the foundation. Oh, yeah, build my foundation on him. Cool. But he says, rather, we are admonished to build our spiritual foundation upon him. And then he says, then he shares like this analogy where when when you're attaching a building to a foundation, you you use like these anchor pins, right? And these steel rods. And what he says, and this is going to connect with you, what you said, Talon, was he says, the sacred covenants and ordinances of the Savior's restored gospel can be compared to the anchor pins and steel rods used to connect a building to bedrock. And then right here, every time we faithfully receive, review, remember, and renew sacred covenants, our spiritual anchors are secured even more firmly and steadfastly to the rock of Jesus Christ. And so again, just reinforcing this idea that being still is not doing nothing. It's actually doing something. It's getting your foundation right. It's remembering those covenants and those ordinances, securing those anchor pins so that when the storms come, we don't get jacked up, right? That totally just reminds me why Christ was sleeping on that boat during that storm. You know, like when I think back to a year and a half ago of being the runner-up 
to that United Nations job, being the runner up to that McKinsey job, right? And storm after storm was coming my way. And I think of my life now and all the relationships I have, the job I have now, the friendships, the passions that I have now that have led me to this point. I am so grateful for God for calming my soul in those heartbreaks, in those storms, because it was because of him calming my soul that I am where I am now. And I feel like no matter what storms we're facing right now, what opposition we may be facing, let God calm your soul. And no, Mm. it's not just in being still, but it's in moving. Let God calm your soul and move. Go forward because God's got your back. Yeah, and you really you really have to be, what was Grace's word? Intentionable? A, <laughs> you, you really do. Be able. Intentionable. Yeah. Intentionable. Come on. You Grace gotta just, you gotta be you. intentional about putting that time aside to let God calm your soul. And I was thinking about the two biggest things that I think keep us from doing that. One, I think is distraction. I think we are so trained whenever we have a moment to go to our phone. We like we, I think we all do it in different ways. And to say, no, like, I'm actually going to have time to be still, to, like, let God speak peace to my soul, to let him calm me. The other biggest thing that I think keeps people from having stillness and time that God can speak to them is FOMO. It's they, they have so much fear of missing out on what other people are doing that they never say no to anything. And they're hanging out at all times with other people. And they, I have to go to this, and I have to go to this, and I have to do this, that they don't set apart that time to really let God speak peace to their soul. They don't set apart that time to let God talk to them. And I, I see it so much. And I, I actually think it's one of the biggest reasons that people learn and grow so much more on their missions is because you have that sacred time every morning and every night for you to be still. Okay, something I have to point out about this is in all of you, I've seen your examples in making that intentional time. Like Talon, I mean, I feel like you have like three or four things in your day where you're like doing that. Like you got your Mm. yogurt, you got your time on the train. (laughs) Talon has yogurt every single (laughs) night, a little bit. (laughs) You got your yogurt. I just bought more yogurt today. It's still good. Every night. Wait, what kind of yogurt? It's it's the Yoplait vanilla. It's so good. (laughs) But like you set apart that time to to be intentional with God to be still. And Hollis, you do it with the um with the sunrise, right? Or with the sunset. Mm-hmm. And and you post those those pictures and you have that set apart time. And Grace, I don't know if you're still doing this, but you probably have other ways you're doing it now. But you had those Jesus walks where you go on those walks mm-hmm. and just be with God. I think if, if someone right now who's listening to this wants to be intentional about letting your soul be still, maybe start with planning it into your day, planning into your schedule, right? Plan some time. Yeah for God so that he can come in and, and calm you and help you. 100%. 100%. And I, I came to this realization that whatever decision you make, there's something that you're missing out on. There's something that you're gaining and there's something that you're giving up. And I just got to the point that stillness with God, letting him speak to me, letting him bring peace to my soul is not something I'm willing to sacrifice. It's not something that I'm willing to give up on. It is more valuable to me than a little bit more time with friends. It is more valuable to me than time on my phone. It is more valuable to me than than shows. It does more for my life than every single one of those things. And the more that I've realized that, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to build out time to be still and I'm going to protect that time because I know what a huge effect that's going to have to calm my soul, to give me direction and to build me into the person that God knows that I can become. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to your God to order and provide in every change. He faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend. Through thorny ways, these to a joyful end. See you next week.